my name's Evan, and I'm not going to help Jason with the opening intro to the podcast because I'm much too cool, and I'm just not about that life. No. No, I'm not. That's you, Evan. That's how you sound. Mic check. Sarah sings sad, soothing serenades to salivary gland cancer sufferers. Sarah sings sweet, sad serenades to salivary gland cancer sufferers. Thank you. All right, here's some Halloween cockamus for you. That's bullshit, by the way. I've looked Halloween, or more precisely, All Hallows' Eve up in the dictionary. Learned that it's actually All Halloween, that's one word, or even All Saints' Eve, being that the day after goes by the street name All Saints' Day. A day in which all those Christian saints whose names you just can't remember but firmly reside at the tip of the tongue, which, for me, is every single saint ever, are to be praised in earnest. Since we can't collectively be arsed to unearth a spare fuck just to hand away for free any other day of the year, the one and only day of the year that jolly old Saint Nick isn't where your focus is intended to stand ready, locked, and loaded. And believe you me, that shit right there is not what you want to tell the most powerful man on earth. An eternal immortal who's second to none at imp enslaving, while somehow finding time for Rangifer Tyrandus taming. How we've not angered this tyrant of the northest of the north with our day intended to draw the laser-like focus of our gaze away from he who firmly has us locked in his maniacal manus? I'll never know. But... I digress. I also learned something interesting from the fakest of news bringer and personal best friend of this podcast research department, a little known website on this crazy new thing called the World Wide Web. Try and keep up. I've seen hackers. So yeah, I checked out the Wikipedia page for Halloween. It taught me, very patiently, about how all Halloween was originated by the ancient Celtics as a pagan harvest festival, more specifically a Gaelic one called Samhain. Then the Christians did what the Christians do and Christianized Samhain, thus becoming a celebration that had, like, totally changed, and in turn was now kind of a bitch, don't you think? Like, for real. <laughs> so I decided to abrogate and abstain from retelling these abhorrent fables and make up my very own. As we go a little something like this. Hit it! Oh yeah. You know what? Lottie Dottie. One day, Huggy Bear. No, not that Huggy Bear. Stupid. Well, Huggy Bear went to the Flooselby store to purchase a brand new shiny dimbledy plop when upon him suddenly struck abject horror. The most abject horror that's ever been horrored objectly. The dimbledy plop had been unceremoniously replaced with some strange new bulbous orange fruit. He huffled and he puffled and he kicked that tart alien food right in the twat. Then what did his eyes behold? A most enjoyable silly face, sporting a toothless grin. A perfect imprint of the sole of his foot left neatly in its posterior's exterior. So now, knowing the marketability of this new bauble, Venetian dollar signs sprang forth from his eyes so fast that his great-great-grandchildren were stricken with glaucoma. He pondered to himself what he would call this very new thing. All that was on his mind was the moon and his peen. I'll call it Halloween, he exclaimed, and ran to the patent office. When his idea was stolen by a Thomas Edison analog from wherever the story takes place, he made a trillion fucking dollars off the idea. So in your face. Enjoy the Halloween episode, everybody. I hate the way that I look in my own clothes. I wear my wife's when I go to the town. 
is gross when I'm wearing her pantyhose. You call me sick and you call me a clown. I think I may, I think I might have humans tonight to come to me, cause I'm coming to you. I think I may, I think I might have you for a bite. I'm gonna cook me up some He-Man stew. Cause transvestites can be cannibals too. And I'll feel better after I eat you. Cause I hate people when I'm not polite. But yeah, so... That damn is not the Night Stalker. Really. It's definitely, definitely a badass documentary from this fucking British dude with balls the size of goddamn dumbbells that goes to like South Central and like oh wow starts talking to people about this and uh, everybody's like oh yeah that 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 guy yeah he's fucked up don't don't fuck with him and like his son oh his son's pretty fucked up too it's just Good it's crazy because he went on doing that shit forever. Oh, man. But anyway, Chris, how you doing tonight, man? Pretty good. Feeling good. Feeling nice with the world. I am uh, stationed for the rest of this weekend in the middle of goddamn bumfuck Indiana. Oh, wait, wait. Can you please tell the people the name of the band that you saw tonight? Please. <laughs> yeah, uh, I actually I caught a couple of songs. The name of this band at this weird little bar in... Uh, where am I? I think I'm in Fort Wayne, Indiana. <clears throat> but the name of this local band is called Big Dick and the Penetrators. Oh, man. Isn't that the best? Hey, wait, hold on a second. Baby, I'm recording. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. She's going off about something. Oh, she's yelling at me about something for sure. So, <laughs> um, what you call Big oh. Dick and the Penetrators. Just a cover band. Dude's got a decent voice, I guess. But, but uh, you, you know, you know what makes tonight really special, Chris? That I'm a few beers in, and I don't have to drive tomorrow. I'm quite a few syringe Jello shots down, and <laughs> it's Halloween the night. This is the day before it's coming out. Oh yeah! So happy Halloween, everybody! I hope happy that Halloween. The indeed. creepy clown apocalypse hasn't destroyed your day, man. And if it has destroyed your day, then at least you can die on Halloween. I I am so jealous when I find people like like a, a good friend of the family. Um, his birthday's on Halloween, so happy birthday, Ozzy. But either way, um, what the fuck, man? I'm so jealous. I wish my birthday was on Halloween. But at the same time, my birthday's so close to a holiday that you would normally get cool presents and stuff like that, that maybe I don't wish it was on Halloween. I, I, you know, yeah, because everyone gets cool fucking presents on Halloween, Chris. Yeah, and everybody's trying to go out to get their own cool presents and candy rather than stay in somewhere to hang out with you for your dude, birthday. Dude, I can't tell you, you how, many, how many fucking times my birthday has been on fucking Mardi Gras. Like, Mardi Gras, damn. Oh, that's not cool. <laughs> Which means no. nobody fucking ever hung out with me. No. So I can only imagine if my birthday was Halloween. Not on sake. Fat Tuesday, bruh. Not on Fat Tuesday, bruh. <laughs> <laughs> so, I got, a, I got a little request uh, uh, for how I should... Uh, introduced the show this week and uh, uh <clears throat> it's uh it's the voice that i gave the donnie darko bunny um oh so so you ready sure hell yeah hi kids you're <laughs> listening to see no hear no speak no <laughs> oh man that almost makes me want to do my kermit the frog impersonation do your kermit but, uh... the frog for the rest come on let's go <laughs> Let's see if I can break it out. Hang on. Um, UFOs, conspiracies, and murders. Yes. Oh, God. That was good. You are the voice master. I love it. That was good. That was good. So, there, there's a, a special you know, reason. We do a, we do a podcast, Piggy. <laughs> Wait, what Fat the fuck? Tuesday you? birthday, have an ass, motherfucker. <laughs> Okay, now it's just sounding like the dude Kermit that I see at the fucking gas station all the time. <laughs> Fuck it, let's go. <laughs> so, we wanted to do something special for Halloween. Something creepy and crawly and just something that would just, you know, make you not want to listen to the whole thing because it's just gross. So, a couple weeks ago, like literally like maybe two weeks ago, uh, in my news feed on my phone in the morning, 
I saw a Washington Post article that was talking about <clears throat> these uh, these th- these cops from Russia had uh, arrested this couple. And the reason is, let me read this paragraph from the from the article. City police have arrested the couple, Natalia Bakshiva, and her husband, 35-year-old Dmitry Bakshiv, who authorities say may be responsible for the deaths or disappearances of as many as 30 people in the city of 750,000 in the southwestern tip of Russia, about five oh. hours from Sochi. So far, Bakshiv wow. has been charged with one count of murder, and the investigation is ongoing. But... The thing Bakshiv is, other, husband? other than, I mean, they both are. I mean, they're both mm. Bakshiv, but yeah, they did it together. <laughs> so okay. the best, not the best part about this, but if all the killings are confirmed, the couple would rank among the country's worst serial killers, right? But uh, Wow, I would think so. But, so the way they caught these people was, someone found a phone on the street. And on the phone were pictures of a man with different parts of a dismembered human body in his mouth. Oh, Jesus. Mm-hmm. It, in his mouth. Wow. You could, you, yeah. It, it's fine. So, um, basically, they've been eating people. And, like, <clears throat> not just, like, some people. Like, they've probably eaten up to 30 people. Well, it, in police custody... He told authorities that he and his wife had practiced cannibalism at least 30 times in the past two decades. Oof. So, I would Oof. love to do a full episode years. on these people because Russia is fucking crazy. And a Russian cannibal couple is even crazier. But, it's they've a just couple. been arrested. There's not enough yet. Like, I, I could just keep reading the goddamn Washington Post article over and over again, but that's not fucking good enough. So... Wow, man. We figured that we would bring a, uh, you know, we'd bring a nice, uh, creepy cannibal episode to you. What's worse than people killing and eating other fucking people, Chris? Well, um, let's see. Uh... I mean, I'm a fan of vaginas, but... Um, no, no. What's worse? Oh, you said what's worse. Oh, okay. My, for some reason, my brain was processing what's better um, instead of what's worse. Yeah, no, I'm not so, that okay. kind of fucking psychopath. Scratch my my last my reply to that, and let's go with pickles on my fucking burger when I specifically requested no pickles on my goddamn burger. Well, you gotta stop going to Burger King. That your way right away at Burger King now is fucking garbage. They That's don't care about you, Chris. They don't care. I'm, They're going to throw burgers on your shit every time to spite you. To throw burgers on my shit? Well, that's one thing, but pickles on my burger is a totally different story, yeah, and throw I it, do not pickle, appreciate I mean, they're going to throw it on your shit, and then they're going to make you eat it, though, is the thing, Chris. Uh, they are terrible. They're terrible people. And Everyone shit. that works at Burger King is a sociopath. <laughs> so, Chris, uh, yes, since this is a special episode about a special topic, and it's Indeed. something that's that's real close to both our hearts, um, mm-hmm. we both have a story for this episode. We do, but mine is technically there. There are no people being eaten. It is a zombie story. There's no people being eaten, but but there are no cannibals. The implications yes. for the future are what matters. Sure. So, do you want to, you want to start, or you want me to start? Um, I mean, I guess it really doesn't matter. We can go uh, since mine has no actual people being eaten. Maybe uh-huh. we should like, you know, start off lighter and go with mine first, and then okay. move up to yours. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. <clears throat> okay. Where well, we then. at? Where we at? Give me, give, paint me a word picture, Chris. Tell me where we are, well. what, where we are in the world, what what time it is. Not I me, mean, not like time of day, but time of. Of of time and um, and let's go from there. Well, let's begin uh, in 1962 in the great, beautiful country of Haiti. That's right. The Beatles are sweeping the nation and, uh, <laughs> in Haiti. And the, yeah, and the, I'm and sure the 1962 <laughs> Firebird is the most wanted car in the world, and, and I'm people sure are it people is. are just obsessed with go-go boots. 
of all the other things that are going on in Haiti, yeah, that those are the things they're most concerned about in Haiti 1962. Haiti was a happening place in 1962. Happening, like, happening like the hippest of the hip cats. You know. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> oh, man, fucking, okay, um... Uh, Haiti's an interesting place, man. We 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 talked briefly. Uh, well, we didn't really, but we we mentioned that something that's near and dear to our hearts and our upbringing bringing comes from Haiti <clears throat> and uh, certain African areas and the difference between the two. You remember we talked about voodoo versus hoodoo? Well, I certainly did. Okay, so this would be voodoo. Uh, that we're going to talk Haitian. about here. Because it's Haitian, exactly. Yep. Mm -hmm. so, and they said um, hoodoo with a lisp. <laughs> hoodoo, well, you, you maybe in certain, depending on, the, depending on the dialect, you may actually have to say it with clicks, I, oh, which man. I cannot physically do anymore since after I pierced my tongue. Are you were you able to used to be noise? able to do that? Not speak that language, not at all, but oh, make but, that weird clicking sound. But make yeah, fun that, of it. I get it, yes. That clock from fucking weird sound. I, ever since I pierced my tongue, which I've taken the jewelry out now years ago, but um, I can't make that noise anymore. My tongue just, I don't know. If, I don't know. Anyway, um, so <clears throat> we're in Haiti. Yeah, we are. Love, love the food. Love it. Love the French's adaptation of it. Love that filthy, fucking bastardized, whatever you want to call it, version that we do in the states and call it right. The, 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 the grilled cheese, the grilled cheese sandwich. Yes, yes. I mean, I love, I love New Orleans Creole food, but it is not authentic Creole food. Yeah, authentic but you Creole also food have totally to, different. You have and to pour it's a bunch delicious. of chicken blood in the other kind and and dance yeah. around it for days naked in the woods. It's just. They, they use it's just a lot too much work, Chris. Oranges. I'd rather it's just weird. buy some Blue Runner beans and throw them in a pot, you know? Agreed. Fucking Blue Runners, man. Every time I roll through the southern, like, southern, southern states, my brother is always like, yo, stop at a Walmart. Yo, see if you can hit a grocery store. Get me some Blue Runners on your way home. <laughs> it doesn't work. I've, I'm still working on it. But, um, <clears throat> so anyway, we're in, uh, we're in Haiti in 1962, which is a weird time everywhere but in right haiti, everyone in haiti has a beatles mop top it's just strange oh uh, that's gotta be weird looking i can i'm just picturing the voodoo priest with with the fucking <laughs> <laughs> rocking his paul mccartney oh that's man right. and in the 60s too they were they were jamming <laughs> a bunch of fucking turtlenecks and and that's right just going everywhere trying to trying to get some tail with some British accents. I love it. And I love it. I do. Bell bottoms being cool, man. This word picture is so vivid. So, um, all right, so we're, we're talking about uh, a man by the name of Clairvius Narcisse. I love it. And Clairvius Narcisse, let's, uh, let, let's talk about the fact that Technically, as far as records are concerned, Clavius Narcisse died in uh, on May second of nineteen sixty-two. Um, he, he was mm. brought into the hospital on April thirtieth mm -hmm. uh, of complications. You know, they just oh, complications. Just complications? Man. It, he, was, it, he was a complicated it, dude, you know. It's Haiti. This is what we gotta say. My shit hurts. Okay, come look at it. All right. So well, this is complicated. He's gonna die. Uh, Sorry about that. Between April 30th and May 3rd, within this stretch of like three days, uh, his, his, well, his fucking, uh, what you call it, his, uh, uh, what the fuck is the word I'm searching for? His condition worsened to the point of death. His complicated condition, yes. His complicated ass condition worsened, uh, to the point of death. And, uh, yeah, he died on May 2nd of 1962. Now, Flash forward. Uh, now this is the, okay. This is, this is complete with a funeral and everything. Flash forward to uh, 1980. Okay, wait, Chris, just real quick. Um, the fact that we're flashing forward leads me to believe that um, his whole death may have not been the end of the story. Hmm. Uh, well, we're talking about zombies. 
perhaps it wasn't. You, you may be, it may be a safe bet there. I am a very observant boy. <laughs> How perceptive of you, sir. You should be awarded with a brownie. <clears throat> so, flashing forward 18 whole years, which is quite a stretch of time, uh, to 1980, uh, in the marketplace, uh, Angelina Narcisse, which is the sister of Clairvius Narcisse, is doing her normal, everyday Haitian marketplace shopping. It's complicated. Let's, yeah. It, it's probably a lot like it was in Mexico, and it's just a bunch of, you know, it's like a fucking, it's foodstuffs. It's yeah, like it's a, a flea it's market. It's a stall but, that's got bugs crawling everywhere, and then people yeah. buy it and eat it. We get it. Yeah. It's like We've a flea market, there. but for yeah. stuff. So, uh, <laughs> so Angelina is confronted by a man who claims that he knows her, but not only that he knows her, but that she is his sister. And she says, what the fuck are you talking about? I don't have any siblings that are living right now. And he claims, okay, the, well, my name is Clarvius. She says, what the fuck is now going on? My brother literally died. We buried him. I was there 18 like almost, years ago. Yeah, I was about to say almost 20 years ago. That's so this, guy is, this guy's obviously just a lunatic, correct? Right, right. But he's, well, you would think so, but he's he's acting very... Mysteri- I wouldn't say mysteriously, very suspiciously. He's not acting as if a normal person on the fucking street walks up to you and says, hey, we're family. He's acting very, rather lethargic, and, uh, uh, you know, he's, he's, he looks, I mean... So, I mean, he's, he's very mime-like, then. He's, he seems almost like he's drunk or half asleep or oh, so, so more like not all there possibly yeah. a little like more like a french kind of special yeah. mm-hmm. right right so so she's like okay well i mean he clearly seems to think he knows me so let's go let's he, take him to a doctor to find out if who this me. man is That's what right. the hell is going on so they take him to a doctor uh dr lamarck duyon <clears throat> and Dr. Duyon actually uh, wound, he studied in um, Canada, I forget exactly where, right. but uh, he's, he's learned elsewhere well, other I mean, than just for, Haiti. He's like Canadian learned, whatever that means. Right, right. Um, elsewhere other than elsewhere. Haiti still. <laughs> so um, he got a leg up there. Uh, so he's brought in, and, and he, as, as he's being looked over, it seems pretty strange, but it's fucking Haiti, right? Yeah. So yeah. He, the guy starts, uh, Clavius starts telling this interesting yet kind of fuzzy, kind of non-coherent story about where he, the fuck he's been for the last 20 years. <clears throat> And uh, the doctor is looking at him like, okay, well, this seems similar to, you know, what I've come, what, what he's come to real to have learned as the classic Haitian voodoo um, zombie story hmm. is what's so, really happening. So he wasn't just like, well, excuse me, ma'am, um, this man that you brought into us, um, he seems to just be um, just full to the brim, just just bullshit. It's just. It's overflowing. <laughs> it's overflowing. No, he 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 listened to the story or to the bits and pieces of whatever story this guy could get out, and he says, "Okay, well, you know, this is this is Haiti. You got to keep an open mind. Shit happens here that we still haven't at this point. We still haven't put a finger on how and why and where." This is done. I mean, we. we I have they, seen Serpent in the Rainbow at least once, and it's only been maybe, I don't know, 18 years since I've seen it. So I'm pretty sure I know what's going on. Have you now? Mm hmm. And you remember that very well, do you? I mean, Jeff Bridges was in it, right? Yeah, but, but do you remember the story. You remember what happened and what goes on and all that. Yeah, he was a white guy. They gave him some stuff, and then they buried him, and he came back, and he was still white. Okay. Mm-hmm. See, I got well, it. Then. Yeah. 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 No. 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 You're that's that's pretty spot on. He was still white when he when he woke mm-hmm. up. 
So, <clears throat> uh, however, what the doctor noticed was that it's his condition was a little less severe, seemed a little less severe than most of he, the... He had uh, his mind a bit more than most. Of exactly, the people that, exactly. Because it's basically like a, a almost a mind eraser, not even a mind erasing drug that they give them. It's it's a personality. It's a person. It's it's it deletes that person from the body and makes it malleable. Oh, it fucks them up bad, bad, bad. Yes, indeed. That's a good way of putting it. I mean, some of the some of the things that can come along with it are um, everything from uh, a, a catatonic state, which is obviously devastating. You know, mm-hmm. there's nothing you can do with that. Uh, hallucinations, delirium. Uh, obviously loss of memory, um, I have fucking loss of self. The, like you said, it, it's literally uh, just completely erases who you are as a exactly, person, yeah. whatever this is. I mean, this that, dude came that, back after 18 fucking years. Man, it it took him, we don't know how long, to figure out who the fuck he was. But at that point, thankfully, he could still give his name and everything, so... <clears throat> what, what he tells the story of being dug up from his grave by a voodoo priest, being given some sort of liquid potion, and then taken to a place on the northern side of the island of Haiti, and and been made to work like a slave. Like being just as you would have a Hollywood imagine it being beaten and everything. And I say Hollywood as if it's not being written, been written in history. Don't let That's me. Right. But people know. Roots don't let me downplay it. Books, so. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't let me downplay it. I'm not trying to make light of it. I'm just saying exactly how you imagine it, how you've seen it in the on the movies. Uh, yeah, being beaten and just been made to work till your fingers bleed. Day in and day out, <clears throat> in and a that, sugar cane I mean, field. and that's that's the basically that is what they want out of like they don't want zombies to come back and and destroy humanity or whatnot. Like they want they want slaves. They want mind erased free slaves. Well, that's exactly right. But up until this point, and this is 1980. Now think of how old this culture is. Think of how long the zombie uh, idea and the zombie practice through the voodoo priests and everything, has been going on. It has, this to, is 1980 it has to be now. I mean, it has to be at least six years, you know? At the very least, six years. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that that's a pretty good estimate, at least six years, yeah. Mm-hmm. That, that's a safe bet. Uh, One dollar, Bob. One dollar. That's right, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, yeah, yeah, so this is now 1980. This is, this is that's a long time. Um, <clears throat> and he's telling this story, which is... The most coherent story that he's that that this doctor or anyone at, to this to date has ever gotten from any of these zombie uh, quote unquote victims, because at this up until this point they they might as well be dead people. Right. When we find them, if we find them, they might as well be dead. So now we're getting an actual story that somewhere. On the north side of the island, or whatever, there is, there is a, a sugarcane field where not only him, but several other people in this same fucked up, zombified state were being made to to slave and work the the sugarcane field. Indeed, and that's just uh, how. Man, I mean, you, like we were saying before we started this episode, well, like I was getting at before we started this episode, you know, the Hollywood and, and the, the movies and the TV and everything, you know, it's not as if they glorify murder and killing and all this evil and all this, all these terrible deeds that people are obviously capable of. But they are, what, what one thing that they make it seem like is that there's so many out there and it's fairly rare but at the same time, throughout the history of human nature, it's not rare at all. Right. People are fucking awful. Right. But at the same time, again, how, like, 
this is this is a culture of people who are all stuck in the same fucked up conditions doing this to each other. Well, that's and what it's been religion going will on. do to you. And it, it's, oh, well, see, that's, man, I was about, I was, that's what I was going to ask you if you didn't bring it up at the end of the show, what you learned. This is what I learned from this right here is that this is another fucking, uh, let's bring the, ca- the, the, the bull into the cave or let's feed him some fucking fucked up hallucinogens and take him into the cave and make bodies dance in, in, you know, in front of the fire. Absolutely. Absolutely. It, it is. It is, let's destroy this thing because it's not me to prove my point that magic is real to other people so I can fucking control them. Exactly. If we see that people are weak, let's find a way to exploit it and either control them or make money or hell, both, if we can figure that part out. Yay, humanity. Yay. Fuck yeah. So that's what we got going on here. And I think it's... Man, I, I don't I, I don't even know what to say about the the how long this could have been going on. This was obviously going on. Zombieism is not a new thing with with Haiti. So what what why, ah It's fucked, God Chris. Damn. It's it's severely and utterly and just one hundred percent completely fucked. It's terrible. <laughs> like my mind was blown by this. You you're you're stuck. You're trapped, basically trapped on this island, and you're doing this to each other. I'm just... It's like being under lock and key. It really is. But and but who knows how... Who knows how much of the person is there while it's happening, if any. I mean, some of this dude definitely survived enough to, you know, notice his sister on the street and say, Holy shit, I know you. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. for him to tell his story, something of him had to still be there but how much was there the the whole 18 years he was there does it come back slowly does it um just was it there that much by the time he was dug up was he ever really dead Uh, i mean chances are no chances are whoever uh you know proclaimed him dead at the hospital was in on it with the whole Uh operation because a uh, a large plantation where you zombify your slaves cannot be a small little outfit, you know what I mean? No, so, I imagine not. No, this this is something that's been going on for generations. This is this is like a family owned and run sort of like almost like the hills have eyes, but right. they don't have to. Well, I mean, like what's like, what's better than paying for slaves? You know free slaves we'll just say they're dead and then we'll dig them up and like oh my god you're alive come work for us oh oh, and the best part though is that is that this is this is a religion-based thing so people are paying you to do this they're paying you not knowing at all what you're doing with the zombies because they don't care about it at that point they might as well be paying you to kill the person but at the same time perhaps it's one of those things where like their conscience is clear because they're not asking you to kill them they're asking you to just turn them into a zombie so they can't be a fucking problem anymore or whatever see that's like what's scary about uh the the major pop culture perception of voodoo because voodoo really isn't this but pop culture makes voodoo out to be this uh it's it's a religion of revenge basically right and i mean it's not they're, like voodoo is really uh, a good natured uh thing and it's a mix between um you know uh some african religions and and christianity which uh-huh. you know it's not this you know let's kill everything zombify everything let's you know uh, sacrifice they definitely sacrifice. had their missionary work uh, show up there on that island so that's, right. that's why it's become a mix match at this point but uh you're right though so that shit's crazy man do we know I, about any anything about this dude after the doctor visit like did he go on to live a full and happy life with his family or you know well you do you do, whether you know it or not. So let's continue, actually. Uh, now that you mentioned that, it does get a little bit better. Uh, so he was in the field working like a slave with these other zombies for two years. And in two ye- after t- at, at that point, um, there was a revolt. And they, they killed the, the slave master, the guy who was out there beating their asses every day. Oh, fuck yeah. So this must have been a bigger operation, but at the same time, it must have been big enough to, se- to have separated 
the slave masters to run their own portions of the field that were big enough to separate them from, you know, their right, own group. Right, absolutely. So, <clears throat> he saw that. He wasn't part of the revolt, but he saw that as his opportunity to escape, and he fucking took it. Awesome. However, now this is 18 years later when he pops up, so it took him 16 years to get back from the north side of the island, I, I'm assuming back to the south side of the island where he's from, where wow. he's caught and, back yeah, up Yeah, Haiti with his is not that big a place. It's really not, but you're on foot and you're fucking but 16 brain years, dead. Yeah, the brain dead thing really comes into play there. <laughs> it puts a damper on your planning and, you know, <laughs> execution <laughs> thereof. Uh, so, yeah, 16 years it takes him to get back to this point. Now, um, the uh, once when Dr. Dion is examining him and he, he realizes, OK, now this is the most coherent story we've ever gotten out of one of these right. uh, people, because after, uh, you know, once you assess at, at up to this point, once they've assessed the, the amount of damage or whatever is going on with these people who have claimed to, to have been zombies, there's not a whole lot they can do with them. Yeah, you know I mean, it's almost like we we just got to commit them. They're basically dead anyway. What, what right, can we do? Right, we just right, gotta, right. You know, so this guy now we have to study because he can talk and he can understand us, and he knows he remembers shit. So we we have to continue to study him. So they cut so, his brain open and did all kinds of studies. And... Well, well, thankfully he didn't have rabies. They didn't have to do that. But um, the, Dr. De Jong wound up calling his brother. And uh, his brother is a, also a doctor uh, who studied elsewhere. Uh, <clears throat> his name is Emerson. And they wound up getting together and uh, did some ground level searching and research and mm -hmm. obtained a little bit of the zombie drug, quote unquote drug, from a source that they found. On right. streets. Which could, could, could be the real street. thing. It could not be the real thing. I, like I said, I saw a serpent in the rainbow. I know how things work. Come on. So this is that exact story. If you want to keep ruining my fucking... Wait. My fucking the zombie segment, was Jeff Bridges? This is that story, yes. No, wait. Jeff Daniels. Jeff Daniels. Jeff Daniels? Wait, is it, it was the president not... in Independence Day. Oh, that's Bill, Bill Pullman, Pullman, dude. It was Bill Pullman. <laughs> yeah, it, it was Bill Pullman, yes. So, uh, yeah, this is this is that story. But this is the portion of it before the white boy gets to the island. Oh, that's right, because he was like a reporter, and he's like, I'm going to go find out what happened with all these Asian guys. And then, and Actually, then... he's an ethnobotanist, but yeah. He, I mean, he's... that's just like a reporter, right? But we're getting to it. We're getting to it. It's it's coming up. Okay. So they get a portion of the of the drug may or may not be real. They send it out for tests, uh, and it comes back inconclusive. Along, it's somewhere in this time, stretch of time, the BBC gets a hold of this story that a zombie has come, blah, blah, blah. And they tell, they, they do this documentary on it. Uh, 1982 now, two years later, uh, this dude, Wade Davis, has seen this documentary and gotten super interested. He's the ethnobotanist. He's the white guy. Right, he's Bill Pullman. Yes, he's Bill Pullman. Oh, he right. goes to Haiti to do some research of his own. He winds up finding, um, you know, getting in good, actually. Instead of just finding a source, he gets in good, like the white man does with the tribal peoples. He gets in good with the with the witch doctors and the voodoo doctors, and in in a uh, okay, I'm studying your religion, I'm studying this, I'm studying that. So he winds up obtaining large portions of the voodoo substance of the zombie substance, right? And he sends it off for testing as well. In I want to say they said like seven samples or some shit like that. Right. All seven samples came back with tons of different like a list of shit that's in this this shit this drug but all seven samples came back with uh 
traces of different types of pan tropical fish which obviously right. you're in haiti you're going to get tropical fish which have uh, like uh, psychoactive properties correct some of which are yes are members of the fugu fish family which if you recall the fugu fish is the fish that the Jap- uh, that the japanese serve as the delicacy that has to be We've all Cut. seen the the Simpsons episode where Homer thought he was going to die. Come on, let's That's go. That's the one. That's the <laughs> fish. So yeah, uh, uh, there are many other, several other fish of the same family that all have this toxin, varying degrees of this toxin in it. Hey, Chris, real quick. Yeah. If you don't fix your fucking headphones, I swear to God, I'm going to burn this fucking house down. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Is that better? Oh, it's so much better. Okay, Thank you. Cool. Thank you. I don't know how it keeps happening. It shit, it shit's not moving. So yeah, uh, that, the fugu fish, the fugu fish is fucked up. It's a fucked up toxin. Yeah, it uh, it almost killed Homer Simpson. Right. So mixed properly of the proper ratios and everything. Picture like ayahuasca. Ayahuasca is made from two plant compounds. Two plants. Of millions, out of millions of plants in the fucking jungle that somehow they figured out to mix these two plants this way and bam, you got the trippiest trip you ever tripped. I'm good, right? thanks. So the fugu fish, the, the, these types the, of the same family, I don't know the exact names of the fish, but mixed with this other shit in the right ratios and what you get is this compound that literally kills you, but only for a short time. Now, Clavius Narcisse was actually buried alive for three days. A no duh. After being given this compound. After which, the zombie, uh, the voodoo priest wakes him up, gives him this antidote juice, which supposedly is only supposed to, you know, it's supposed to knock him out of it completely but right. depending on how long they're dead before giving this juice i guess it can only last for so long the toxin can only last for so long i suppose it winds up killing you at the end if you're not given the antidote but apparently it lasts for quite a while or they've dumbed it down to last for quite a while before they dig them up but i i suppose however long you're under your brain is still being deprived of oxygen, so that's how they wake up in this brain dead stupor. That's Absolutely. why they're, they're considered buried. zombies because they're brain dead. <laughs> they're fucking dead. <clears throat> so after doing some digging, they wind up finding out that uh, there was a death in the family recently, and the brother, the oldest brother was having a dispute with Clavius about what, who was going to be get what out of it, out of the inheritance or whatever. Right, 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 right. So he hired a voodoo priest to turn his brother into a zombie. Wow, what a dick. Yeah. What? And a that dick. is also the serpent in the rainbow. The ethnobotanist turned around and wrote a book. And it was a cool movie in the 80s, and I was terrified of it as a child because I remember the fucking the movie cover, the poster. It's uh-huh. so fucking creepy looking of the boat and the, the white dude with the fucking cross burned into his forehead. So, into his forehead. So I always thought it was like a, a weird vampire movie or something fucking super scary. And it and, turns out yeah, that it's not that scary a movie. It's actually kind it's of It's really not. No. No, it was cool. I liked it a lot, actually. It but right. it, it's also a little bit of a dramatization. You yeah. know? Oh, you think? You mean the botanist wasn't turned into a zombie that couldn't leave? No, he was never turned into a zombie himself. He just got in good, like, homies with the voodoo priest. and Which is really where you want to be in Haiti, is good, Hell like, yeah. homies in with the ho- Yeah. Well, Chris, <laughs> yeah. Y- you just, uh, that was a good, that was, that was awesome, man. Like, I, I mean, any, I've heard, I've heard that before only because of Serpent in the Rainbow and stuff, but I'm positive that many, many, many haven't. And, uh, that is a crazy fucking story. It's a, it is an actual cool. real life zombie. It's somebody that was buried is dead, brought back to life three days later. <clears throat> and, um, yeah. wait, no, that's Jesus. 
Um, <laughs> okay, never yeah, mind. Yeah, this didn't, this didn't no. happen on A-State. This is totally unoriginal, and I hate it, and god damn. It's all about Jesus. Well, I thought it was fun, but I it was. I it was. Failed. It was really, really, really cool, dude. Because uh, I think a lot of people are going to hear that story, and they're not going to have heard it before. And there's something about that, like this. It's terrifying, and it's it, not. It's not just the yeah, zombie it thing. It, it's the whole third world country thing. It's the voodoo thing. It's it's just the fear of the unknown that would get you there. You know, being a fucking brain dead slave. Yeah. Yeah, that's a little creepy. A little <laughs> yeah, creepy. that's terrifying. It really is. I mean, being enslaved in general is terrifying, but being, uh, yeah, no, that's that's taking it way too far. That is sadistic and fucking. I mean, I guess if it's a generational thing, for you're born into it, you're desensitized. I don't, I don't try to under to to, to rationalize the mind state of no, somebody you. You who can't. does terrible things like this. No. But at the same time, I try to somehow, somehow find some kind of angle that this could have been forced on you and somehow... No, it's jealousy. It's jealousy and vengeance. That's all it is. No, he, I'm, talking, he, I'm talking more about the, the dude who beat your ass on the fucking, in the field and knew where these people, what was happening this money. whole time. Money. Oh, God. It's money, Chris. It's money. Disgusting. So, I applaud you, sir. That was that was awesome. That was very very fucking cool. But you know what? Thank you. You know what, Chris? Yours is gonna be grosser. It's my turn. It's my That's... turn, and I'm bringing the fire. Oh, I've ready? been waiting for this. Yes, so, I am. So, my story is about Issei Sagawa. <laughs> he uh, he's was one of my heroes. He was born in Kobe, Japan, to wealthy parents. Um, he was born prematurely. He pizza. was a, he was reportedly he was small enough to fit in the palm of his daddy's hand, mm-hmm. and he immediately had enteritis, which is a uh, like a disease of the small intestine, which makes babies poop like diarrhea like crazy. Oh. But he got it. He was fixed after, like, he had uh, potassium and calcium uh, injections and shit like that. I guess that's what they do. But, so, uh, the reason I picked Issei Sagawa is because he is, um, he's not only a cannibal. He's, like, the cannibal. He only killed and ate one person. I say he's only. He's a pretty like, special like, guy, though. Like, that's a lot, but... This dude is walking around free after serving basically no fucking jail time, and he's become famous for it. So I'd like to point out, though, um, that so far throughout our, our episodes so far, we've talked about some, as far as the serial, the, the killer episodes have gone, the murder episodes have gone, we've talked about some pretty intense people, right? but none have been like... Over the top. Oh, this dude's sick. Ridiculous, intense. This dude's sick. You know and, I mean, there's been and some pretty best, wacky shit. But the best part about this dude, I mean, I say whenever I say best part, just make believe that I said the most fucked up part mm. is that he did this all for sexual pleasure. This wasn't. Well, I feel like this guy is like the the like the fucking the end of the sidewalk before you get into the street of the the really fucked up shit that's happened, the people that we'll eventually go into and the stories Absolutely. we'll eventually tell. You know, Absolutely. like we're trying to, we're, we're slowly amping it up type of thing. Like some of the UFO stories, just like some of the UFO stories that I have coming are fucking just, whew. So Issei Sagawa is nothing short of very intense. Yes, and and he's like riding the line. If he'd have had any more victims, I feel like he would have been he would have been one of the people that were amping up too. Exactly. But since Absolutely. he only had one, he's like, right? He's it's like this right is such there. a crazy, crazy fucking story. But it's not it's like a thin he, line of what you think like about him at the end. Terrorized, you know, <laughs> right? a whole state or whatever. You know, like he. He's, he, but he did something super fucked. Super he's fucked. the guy that really makes you wonder, though. At the at the end of this whole thing, he's the guy that's like, 
I don't know. I might be able to hang out with him. No, 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 no. I might. Okay. I might. No, okay. Well, we need you need to hear my story, Chris, because you might <laughs> you may have seen uh, that little Vice interview that I saw and stuff, which is great. Like, if you, I'll I'll post it on the Facebook page. I will not be able to post pictures of his victim on the page because yeah, no, we, no, no, the no, page would be that. taken down. But I will don't be posting links to the pictures of the victim. So okay. So Sagawa, he. He first, like, found his desires for cannibalism when he was in the first grade because he saw one of the uh, his male classmates' glistening thighs, <laughs> which is great. But, That's the w- wackiest statement to me, and I'm not trying to slow you down or, or hold... But to know anything of yourself and a real true desire oh, in the first grade is something to say about the brain... That is just whack. Uh, no, now, I'm not I, saying absolutely. a kid can't understand himself or any part of himself. A kid knows he likes candy and chicken fingers in the first fucking grade. He well, this dude, know... this dude also knew that he liked to fuck dogs. See, so... yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Like, sometimes kids know real, real, real young that, like, oh, well, just for one example, like, they're gay. If a child knows really early when he's gay, he's really, really gay. <laughs> and that's okay. That's fine. But it's just very, very seldomly does a child know anything substantial or set in stone like oh, no, that absolutely. about themselves at such a young age. Absolutely. And for it to be cannibalism is just amazingly. The dude just knew that he wanted to eat people. Like that's all it is. Fucking he knew. insane. He knew that he wanted to eat people. So he he had these. These, uh, you know, these thoughts in his head and everything. So, when he was 23 years old in Tokyo, um, he had this, uh, he had an ex- just this crazy obsession for uh, Western women, just tall, beautiful, blonde Western women. So, he followed this tall German woman home, and then after she fell asleep, he broke into her apartment. And while she was sleeping, he went in to basically he went and tried to take a bite out of her so with the what? complete intent to just eat this lady he just tore a chunk out of her and what? then tried to get away but she woke up and uh and the lady pushed him to the ground because he's this sickly little boy and uh the police came and caught him and they charged him with attempted rape uh so he and, walked in and bit her while she was asleep, yes. He bit a bite out of a sleeping woman. Uh, he took a chunk out of this woman. So, Ooh. cops got there and were like, okay, attempted rape, we guess. Because he wasn't about to confess that he was there to fucking eat her, you know? Uh-huh. Like, that's just crazy. <laughs> so, uh, that's when he was 23. When he's 27, this is 1977, uh, he went to France to get his PhD in literature at the uh, the Sorbonne in Paris. Um and then he says that while he was in Paris, almost every night I would bring a prostitute home and then try to shoot them. But for some reason, my fingers froze and I couldn't pull the trigger. Right? Because, <laughs> you know. So, this is where we get into the uh, pun completely in- intended, the meat of the story. All right. Oh, yeah. So, on June 11th, 1981, he was 32 years old. And uh, he invited his school classmate. Uh, her name was Renee Hartfelt. Hart, wait, uh, Hart Levitt, maybe? Yeah, Hart Levitt. Uh, whoever. Her name's Renee. <laughs> <laughs> he invited her to dinner because he had said that uh, he had a uh, he had an assignment to translate a bunch of poetry. So his his plan from the beginning was to kill and eat her, um, and he picked her because she was healthy and beautiful and young and you know all this shit so uh yeah and these are all things that he wish he had he wasn't healthy he wasn't pretty none of this shit when you see pictures of him at the time of this when he was 32 he had the worst fucking comb over i've ever seen that's not (laughs) that is not on donald trump's head so um, (laughs) it was so special he uh he wanted to absorb her energy she was uh, she was twenty five at the time five ten, uh, and then you know she got there and started re- reading poetry at a desk with her back to him because that's always the best place for you to be. 
And um, oh, always keep your so, back to everybody. So he shot her in the neck with a rifle. Um, <laughs> a rifle? A rifle. He had a rifle in his room. He took it out of a closet. She's sitting there reading poetry, and he pointed at her, pulled the trigger, died instantly. Or so he says. Wow. She di- he died instantly. She died instantly. Um, <laughs> this is the best part. Uh, he fainted. <laughs> He fainted Damn. after the shock of shooting her. Um, but then when he woke up, he was like, uh, well, she's dead. This has got to happen. I mean, you know, whatever. Um, mm. So he uh, he raped her, uh, mm. her, her dead body, her corpse. Um, and then he, uh, he tried to bite into her skin. Um, so what he... Part? Um, he really wanted uh, a bite of her right buttock. Uh, <laughs> so he goes down to take this bite. He wanted to eat that ass. And he tries to bite. <laughs> and uh, it just wouldn't happen. He tried, <laughs> and it hurt his fucking jaw real bad. It's like this, it's like this a fucking awful caramel or peanut butter chewy candies that the old ladies give out. Dude, it's been just like in that candy yes, bowl right. for fucking years. You're right, dude. It's just uh. like that. <laughs> so, without being able to bite into this chick's ass, he uh, <laughs> he's like, "Well, shit, I still gotta eat her." So he leaves to go buy a uh, a specific like meat meat cutting knife, like not quite a mm. butcher's knife, but like a you know a carving a, knife, like a, a carving knife. Carving yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, I know. I have here. I know very well what kind of knife you would need. I have here. Oh, that's awful. Uh, his quote about when he got back with the carving knife. So, the first thing I did was cut into her buttock. No matter how deep I cut, all I saw was the fat beneath the skin. It looked like corn, and it took a while to actually reach the red meat. The moment I saw the meat, I tore a chunk off with my fingers and threw it into my mouth. It was a truly historical moment for me. That said, it wasn't like I was lusting over the fact I was cutting up her dead body, so it's difficult for me to revisit the incident and talk about it even now. This must sound rich coming from me, but the moment the girl became a corpse, I realized that I had lost an important friend and even regretted killing her for a moment. What I truly wished was to eat her living flesh. Nobody believes me, but my ultimate intention was to eat her, not necessarily kill her. To this day, I still think, if only she had let me taste her just a little bit. If we had spent another evening having dinner and chatting about our families, I never would have been able to kill her. In other words, I can't protect, project my fantasies onto somebody who is already personified in my mind. Wow. If he had known this girl as a friend, he he just couldn't do it. He just wouldn't be able to fucking do it. And uh, just just real quick, I wanted to read uh, another uh, quick quote from his his childhood because this really tells you a whole lot about him. Um, you know, he says, I was physically weak from the moment I was born. My legs were so skinny they looked like pencils. It was in the first grade of elementary school when I saw the quivering meat on a male's classmate, male classmate's thighs, and I suddenly thought, hmm, that looks delicious. But I'm not homosexual. So from the time I entered junior high school, I became obsessed with the Western actress, actress Grace Kelly, an obsession that lasted right through high school. That was the beginning of my infatuation with Occidental people, which I looked up the, uh, the definition for Occidental, and that's just people that aren't from where you're from. Oh, I've uh, been wanting to know what that meant. Yeah. Before I knew it, tall, healthy-looking Western women became the trigger for my cannibalistic fantasies. I guess my infatuation with such women stemmed from the fact that I was short, ugly, and had an inferiority complex, and therefore sought people who were the exact opposite of myself. Eventually, I began feeling a strong desire to bite into them. Not to kill them or eat them, per se, just merely to gnaw on their flesh. It was purely a form of sexual desire. It wasn't like I felt eating someone every time I was hungry... But you know how you tend to feel strong sexual desire when you've eaten a full meal? That's when I would start feeling the urge to eat a girl. It's absurd, right? In essence, it's different from the type of hunger that people experience for food. This cannibalistic urge where I'm going 
I want to eat human meat is sort of a sexual appetite. So if I don't make sure that I ejaculate frequently enough, the desire only gets stronger and stronger. So, wait, so he's got to jerk off to calm the urge to eat people? Did I not just, did I not just say that in, in English, Chris? I, that's... Like, just, you've never had to jack off to stop eating people, Chris. God, you think you're just so much better than everybody else, and it's, it's getting really tiring, Okay. I'm picturing this guy with a fucking... <laughs> I'm just hearing George Takei's voice this whole time. It's okay. It's crazy. He's, this dude is so out of his fucking gourd, but at the same time, he's so fucking crazy. All I wanted was to eat her right buttock. Oh so, my. for two days... Sagawa ate various parts of her body, saving other parts in the fridge. Where yet? Where are you gonna? Where are you gonna put them? You gotta put them in the fridge. Where you yeah, they gotta it? stay good. Yeah, I mean, then he attempted to dump her body. This part is priceless. Okay, this tells you what kind of person we are dealing with here. He wanted to do- dump her body in uh, in a lake in the Bois de Boulogne. Okay. That's right. I said it. I said it like that, and you're never going to hear it out of my mouth again. Okay. Okay, so, centuries well, like. ago, century, centuries ago, this lake, ha ha, see, I found a way around it. It belonged <laughs> to the kings and queens of France. They would attend their parties, climb on horses, go hunting. Um, it was given to Paris by Napoleon the Third in 1853. At 2,000 acres, it's the largest of this, the capital city's parks. They uh, gave him it, a lake? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. You know, you just hand it over sometimes. All right. I mean, it doesn't fit in your back pocket, but he's fucking Napoleon. Cool. So... It, uh, he had a small back pocket. This, this, uh, this, this uh, you know, park area has a bunch of lakes, uh, sweeping expanses of green, um, all kinds of people out there during the day, and when the weather's good, uh, lots of people are in boats and, uh, you know... Just swimming in the water, just having a great day, you know? Um, mm-hmm. And it's still, like, real popular at night. But, uh, you know, the atmosphere kind of changes uh, because throughout the 70s, uh, muggings had been a real bad problem. Uh, and in the 80s, um, that had gone down, but then prostitution had taken over. Yeah. So uh, on any night, there'd be a dude and chick prostitutes out there. Um just uh, even like <laughs> they're just trying to see what works for the long haul what what fits the neighborhood you know well this is what fit the new, the neighborhood including a throng of brazilian transvestites who clearly had their specific admirers oh that's right well, so then. but then by the early 1990s uh aids kind of you know kind of stopped that stuff but they, there's still, you know, lots of people that go out there for little trysts and whatnot. Keyword there being kind of. Kind of uh, stop that stuff. Yeah, kind of. Kind of yeah. a bit. So this is what this dude does. He packs her body in suitcases. Right? I mean, there's, mm-hmm. there's, <laughs> there's really not that much body left. Yeah. Whoa, I'm just thinking about the pictures right now. It's making me kind of weak. It's just... I I didn't bother. No, I didn't look at... No. Chris, you gotta. It's a a once-in-a-lifetime kind of thing. Oh, God, he took all the meat off of the thigh. Like, where you see just thigh bone. And he Uh he chopped both boobies off. Uh Uh-huh. And... All right. Okay, give me a sec. Okay, so he put her body, her body in suitcases, and he ran to that lake to dump them. And uh, it was kind of I don't I I can't say it was like in the middle of the day, but there were like there was a lot of people out there. <laughs> um, what the fuck? So he runs up and he uh, pushes the suitcases off of a hill and uh, toward the lake. And then just tries to... And, like, he didn't even run, like, right away. And some dude sees the suitcases and looks at him and he's like, Hey, are these your suitcases? 
And he's like, no. Oh, <laughs> and then he yeah. opens them and sees the horror show inside. Oh, so, um, he was not a very good criminal. He uh, no, took a cab. He sounds pretty. Yeah, he, he took a flattish. cab there. Uh, when the cabbie was helping him put the suitcases in the trunk, he said, What are there, bodies in here? And he was like, No. Uh-huh. <laughs> and like, why wouldn't you be like, Yeah, there's bodies in there, you big dummy. Bring me to the lake already. <laughs> you know? Wow. Oh, so. He, uh, <laughs> so they basically just uh, they traced the cab. And they got the him. The funniest thing is that he's not the only criminal that's, that's experienced exactly that. Like, a body in a fucking suitcase in a cab, and the cab driver making that exact fucking comment. This is not the first time this no, has happened. No, it's not. And you know what? It won't be the last. It at won't. all, ever. Oh, my God. That's so, so morbid. And just... <laughs> so, uh, Sagawa's... <laughs> Uh, he had like a super wealthy dad. Um, his dad got a lawyer for his defense, and uh, after being held for two years without trial, he was found legally insane in France. Right? Yeah, so okay. the judge who ordered That's him something. held indefinitely in a mental institution, uh, at, but then he was visited by um, it, basically. Let's just cut this down and say that the French didn't want Sagawa in their fucking country anymore. At all. <laughs> they didn't want him there. So, he was deported to Japan. And when he was sent to Japan, he went to a mental institution. Well, uh-huh. in this institution, the Japanese said, This motherfucker ain't crazy. <laughs> and then they let him loose. He's like the French are pussies. They That's what's opened going on here. the fucking door <laughs> and let him free. Because charges in France had been dropped, the French court documents were sealed and were not released to the Japanese authorities. Oh, Consequently, no shit. Sagawa could not legally be detained in Japan. He checked yeah. himself out of the hospital on August 12th, 1986, and remained free. That's Sagawa's amazing. continued freedom has been widely criticized i wonder fucking why <laughs> that's amazing so i'm going to tell you a little bit about his post release life because uh-huh. he has had a better time than most cannibals uh after their cannibalism i wish so. i wish everyone could see the smile and just it's it's not a full smile. It's like a, one of those like almost like half gaped mouth. Yeah, because he's got fucked up teeth and shit. Amazed and a smile at the same time. No, on my face. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, because you got fucked like, up teeth and shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, between eighty six and ninety seven, he was he was f- just asked to be a guest speaker at all kinds of fucking places. In 92, uh, he appeared in an exploitation film, uh, which the subtitle for us would be Unfaithful Wife, Shameful Torture. And he was in it as a sadosexual voyeur. Um, oh. he's, he's written books about the murder, as well as uh, Shonen A, a book on the 97 Kobe child murders. Ooh. Um, he's he's written restaurant reviews, which is exactly what a cannibal that. you want that cannibal doing that shit. Uh, and it was for the ma- hey, the he Jap- knows good meat. <laughs> it was for the Japanese magazine Spa. Mm. Spa. Yeah. Oh, oh, this is another thing. He said that human meat was the greatest meat he's ever tasted in his entire life. He said that the further up the body you get, uh, the better it tastes. He said that. The back of her neck and her tongue were the most delicious. The tongue was so delicious, he ate it raw. Um, He said anything torso up is just delicacy delicious. But he also said that after a few days, it started to taste better. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, what do you know? He even tried to eat the soles of her feet, but he said that it was just too rough and dirty tasting. Yeah, I imagine that. It do your feet sweat way too much. To and be. he he did try to eat her clitoris. Why? That's but like she was a nibble. The rag. 
That has nothing to do. This so shit. he said oh, it was a little too weird for him. Oh, that was that part was too weird for oh, him. Oh yeah, he, he'll 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 bone and skin a girl to eat, but ooh, eating a girl out on a rag, that's just too much. He'll try to bite her ass cheek raw and eat her tongue raw, but her clit being a few inches that never mind. We're not going to go into oh. never mind. <laughs> he also had a friend I don't know where this friend came from or whatever, but she used to uh, she used to pee in jars so he could drink it. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and then, but then she she got pregnant and had a baby, and uh, and then she would still pee in the jar and like drop it off at his house so he could drink it. But he said, you know what? I can't drink it anymore because she's a mother now, and that's just not right. Well, the man has. He's got scruples, is what I'm saying, Chris. Yeah. The man has yeah. scruples. He'll drink a chick's piss, but not if she's had a baby. That's just gross, man. It's not right. She's a mom. She's a mom, and her pee deserves to not be drinking by him. Okay. okay. So, anyway, he's... Uh, but if she wants to come off one of those ass cheeks, though, he'll take it. <laughs> so, he can't find... it Like, today... He can no longer find any publishers for his writing, and he's really struggled to find employment. After his parents died, he uh, he sold his house and paid for their shit, and uh, he he's just lost now. Like he he's he's lost his house. He's lost uh, any fame that he did have. Which good fuck that dude. And uh, you know he's in a place that that uh, they should be. That cannibal should be. So, Wait, I but, thought you said his parents were rich. Yeah, they they were. Oh. And then they had a, a cannibal son. Yeah. So, I'm going to leave you with his parting quote here from this, this interview he had. Uh, the interviewer asks, Do you have a message for all of the girls around the world reading this? And Issei says, Sure. I would love to invite any woman who wants to kill me to step forward. Beautiful women only. That would be the ideal way for me to die. Maybe yeah. they can shoot me up with morphine so that I don't feel any pain. Although I guess the pain is part of the pleasure. Dying instantly is boring. So I want to savor the process of being killed. An alternative would be to drown in female saliva. Wouldn't it be wonderful to be covered all over with women's spit? If I could uh. die drowning in it, that would be my ultimate dream come true. I'm a cowardly man who killed another person, yet I can't face killing myself. So I guess dying at the hands of a woman would be my way to redemption. What a creepy little shitbag. And that, my dear friends, is the skin-crawling, vomit-inducing story of Issei Sagawa, the Japanese cannibal. Okay, so maybe I wouldn't hang out with him. No, Chris. No, there's no going back on that. I've already set the date. He's getting paid per diem, even though I'm not really sure what per diem means. And <laughs> you guys are going to Mexico. We're going to go play pool and eat tacos. And yeah, guys named Taco. Drink some good meal Oh, Man. So, Chris, what did you yeah, think of our very first person. Halloween special, man? Was it spooky? Was it full of thrills and chills? Yeah, I thought it was pretty cool, man. Issei, Issei is a fun... He's just a fun-loving guy. You know, you know? I... He's I'd, hungry, it, though. It would take me far... That. It would take me far too long to find the actual message, but maybe the second day that I actually started talking to... My, my girlfriend, Melissa, before she was that title, I told her, I was like, I'm going to tell you something that's kind of fucked up, so prepare yourself. Uh -huh. I was like, now, I'm super into, like, serial killers. And I want to tell you now that I never have before, not now, and never will have aspirations to ever hurt another living human being, but... The reason I love these people in these stories so much is because they prove that 
It's like they're the last magicians. They mm-hmm. are the last people on Earth that can show me a side of the world that doesn't exist in everyday polite par- polite parlance. Mm-hmm. It's it's they show me something fantastical and amazing, no matter how grotesque it is, that you just don't experience every day, and that's why this dude's story just amazes me. It's fucking horrible, and when you see the pictures of this poor girl's body, especially her little foot sticking out of that suitcase, it's goddamn heartbreaking. But it's fascinating. At the it's same time. so fucking crazy, fascinating that I can't look away because it's new and it's interesting and it's wholly original yeah well that's for sure that guy is a character oh did you even did you i don't think you even mentioned the part about um the video oh he was yeah i mean i kind of did this the porno thing but he did this thing with a uh, a japanese porn actress this uh producer paid this Japanese porn actress to go have sex with Issei three times. And they didn't tell her what he had done until after they had had sex. And this girl, upon hearing this, breaks the fuck down. Uh. And, uh, but when she leaves, she's really thinking about it and and she just thinks to herself, wow, this is a really sad dude. Uh. And they become like friend friends. And, like, she helps him with, you know, his problems and shit like that. But it's weird. You got just go online. I'll, I'll try to find links to it, and I'll put it up on the Facebook. But, yeah, <laughs> it's, 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 it's fucking crazy. I hope she got paid pretty well for that. That's a well, I'm, fucking I'm sure wacky thing to spring I'm sure she on did. somebody. I did. Well, Chris, you know what, you know what, Chris? So you remember that thing, that that guy that was in your butt a few minutes ago? Yeah, he <laughs> ate one of the uh, last girls that let him anywhere near her butt. Happy yeah. Halloween, everybody. <laughs> oh, man, eat some candy and Not some try people. to refrain from clitorises Unless they are chewing them anyway. Not on their period. Then go yeah. for it. Well, I'm. We're not gonna. Happy yeah. Halloween, Charlie Brown. <laughs> Happy Halloween, kids. You uh, just listened to the to. very first Halloween special of See No, Hear No, Speak No. <clears throat> UFOs, conspiracies, and murder. <laughs> All right, man. That was a good show. I like it. Oh, good. Three, two, one. Goodbye. Goodbye.